price is really important because we think most of the time is a signal for how important or how valuable something is. And water, as you know, is essential to life. But that's the paradox, right? The classic paradox is water is essential to life and diamonds are not, but the price mechanism doesn't operate as well. well Singapore prices is water at cost recovery. And we get maybe the bill is maybe 20 US dollars on average. And if you think of Kathmandu, the cost of water each month to a household is something like US $13. If you take into account the cost of obtaining the water, for example, buying from water vendors, walking and sort of going to queue for these various um, access points, right? It's maybe seven US dollars difference. And that to me is astonishing, right? Maybe we don't properly price the value of time and the opportunity cost of poor water supply. And therefore you can't do this calculation properly and I think that's part of the problem. When people think things are free and people think these things are important, it's almost the goal of governments therefore to provide these things and make sure that people have access to them. Many people instinctively feel that if something's important, it ought to be subsidised. If you want to motivate people to change their behaviour, it becomes really difficult to use price alone. The next thing is what I would call morals or morality, our desire to do the right thing. So we found that the greatest variable that what motivate people to drink recycled water is social conformity. So I was curious to see, would this also apply to vaccines? And I recently did an experiment across different countries, and it turned out to be true. So people may be reluctant to take new vaccines like mRNA compared to traditional vaccines because the technology is new. It's the same thing as recycled water. If at least 20% of the people in their country had taken it, they would be greatly motivated to take it. So it's not just, you know, uh, behaviour relating to water, it's behaviour relating to other parts of our lives as well. We think water is therefore free, like it's rain is free, clean air is free. But as we reach the limits of our sort of planet's ability to absorb human activity, we see now that these things are not free. So maybe about five years ago, Singapore experienced one of the worst droughts in its history. I think everybody would remember that the grass was parched. And in the face of drought, you would expect people will save more water, right? That, you know, we have to be careful, our reservoirs are, are you know, the, the levels are so low. However, water use actually went up by 5%. So that kind of shows you that the good thing is we have high confidence in the water system to deliver. The bad thing is we don't mediate our behaviour, even in the face of what's very visually salient um, low water supply. So this leads me to a point that, well, maybe we really need some kind of rationing exercise. It will um, be inconvenient, it will cause some discomfort, but maybe it's worthwhile to remind us uh, in a sort of very powerful way what it means to be without water.